Hey everyone, Larry Chen here. That was super quick. We just got to Gridlife Midwest. Five minutes of me walking in or driving in. We see this awesome uh, Volkswagen. It's a uh, little funky looking. As soon as I walked around it, I kind of noticed there's something special about it. Mike, the builder, is here and yeah. driver, right? Wheel and driver, yep. What, uh, what is this thing? What? Tell me what this is. This is... It's tough to call at this point. It, it was a Mark III GTI. Um, it, I bought it as just a shell. So it's got a BMW V8 and it's rear wheel drive for uh, drifting. Okay, so it's a drift car. Drift car. Uh, the, the crazy thing is looking around it, just walking around it, this is something I would more likely see at a, a Gottville event in Europe. Right. You know, this is something that you don't really see that often here in the US. Uh, what made you want to do this build? Uh, I like fabrication and stuff almost more than driving. So kind of that's the fun of it for me, having something different, just kind of, I don't know, the odds and ends of fabricating bits. That's the draw to it, so. It, it's so much wider too than the uh, stock GTI. Tell us how much wider it is. Um, it's hard to know at this point. The front's like, I don't know, six or seven inches wider. And that was what kind of driv drove it, was to get more angle with this size tire um, without cutting like the entire front off the car. Um, I had to make the arms about that much wider. So, uh, and I kind of made the rear match. But like, all right, we'll get into, I guess, the rear, but let's check out the motor first. Okay. That's not supposed to be in there. No. <laughs> it's just kind of a hodgepodge of hand-me-downs. This was in another car of mine and that was coming out. So this is a bit of uh, leftover parts. So. so what did this originally come out of? This came out of an E39 540. So an early car, this is the non-Venos. Hmm. And so four liter. 4.4. 4.4. Yeah. 4.4 V8 uh, and it's pretty much stock then? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's got like a tune and then headers to make it fit in here. But Have you dynoed this? Yeah, I did 275 wheel. Okay. And that's how much more? About 100 more than this or, or, or 150 more than the original chassis? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Why, why this power plant though? Because you had it laying around? Yeah. I, I put it in another car of mine probably 10 years ago and that's getting another swap now. So this was sitting around and it's got a little over 300k on it. So it's not really worth anything to, any, anything to anyone else. Still runs fine. So kind of hand me down power plant. So, so much of the front is cut out. Yeah. So how much is actually still Volkswagen here? Um, the firewall I made from here kind of out and then the sides of the car. It's a pretty rusty car. so up to about the the seats is still a Volkswagen and from there back is all new sheet metal. Huh. Okay. I mean, and the cage is pretty stout. It, it yeah. ties into everything. Like all of this, one of the first things that we notice is the, the bash bar that's integrated into the stock bumper here. Yeah. So all of this stuff, all of it obviously is functional, but yep. did you make these yourself too? Yep. Yeah. It's all sheet metal. So I just finished that up uh, this spring. I can't believe it. it's not fiberglass. Nope, fiberglass is itchy, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you mean about fabrication and you even went out of your way to like continue this? Yeah, just a little piece of the old trim and tried to throw it back in place. Kind of try to keep all those little seam lines and everything. It's like, why would you do that? But I guess why not? Yeah, I'm just having fun. It's done really well too. I really like it. Um, how the heck did you match it so well on uh, just sides. trying to like measure it up and make patterns each side. So it's not perfect, but it's close enough to, for a drift car, you know? So what did you do to the front suspension to, or it's, all, it's, all of it is custom? Yeah, it's all custom. So it's a tubular subframe, an S13 240 steering rack, and then custom control arms. Still Volkswagen outer knuckles, but I cut them up and kind of changed the geometry around. It's just so much a hodgepodge of parts just put together. Yeah, it's kind of what was available and cheap and nothing here is really expensive on this car. It's just a bunch of pieces put together. It's just a lot sense. of your time. A lot of time. Put together to put or to put this together. Uh, wow. So what about the rear end then? What, how does that work? Is it like a BMW rear end? No, it's a solid axle from a Ford Explorer. Wow. And 
I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> but why that? Is it the size or? Uh, it's a cheap, very very strong axle. It's uh, the 31 spline with the Explorer stuff versus like, you know, the Crown Vic or anything like that it has a very similar, but slightly weaker rear end. So, and they were like a hundred bucks, so. That's it. Yeah. And then I did the four link geometry. So, you know, it's got pretty good anti-squat numbers. It actually has a fair amount of grip. So, it and, behaves pretty well. I mean, you're running pretty wide tires. Too. Yeah, 265s all around. Huh. Square setup. This, uh, and the cooling system is in the rear? Yep. It's got a Jeep XJ radiator in the back. We can open this if you want. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I also like that this is still glass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. All of this is so, it's so crazy. So, and this is something where it's like, just something that you had laying around or it? I was or... going through the catalog of different radiator sizes and I wanted something that fit, like use the whole space between the rear shock towers and then it was kind of low so I could still see out the back window. Yeah. I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, you made all of this yourself by hand? Yep. They're all hand beat rolls and everything. Same with all the floor in the back. That is incredible. The whole tunnel. Seriously, this is definitely something that I would expect to see just not here. It, it definitely in Europe. Right. But, but not here. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, and the cage you did yourself too? Yep. Wow, so intricate. Yeah. Kind of overkill, but I like doing the tube work, so. Uh, huh. And this is your first time coming to grid life? Yes. Oh, well, hopefully it stops raining so you can get some nice laps in. Yeah. But this, so this is actually functional then? Yep, both. There's a little divider in here. So the inlets of both sides are the radiator fans. And then it's separate out the back. There's a vent out the back too, so. Yeah, because most over fender national cars that you see at SEMA, not functional at all, right? And also all of them are fiberglass. Right. Uh, this, the fact that this is metal, and it's actually pulling in air to cool the motor. Yep. Just too cool. So did you have to do that because there was not enough room in the front? No, now? I probably could have made space, but it's kind of weight distribution. And then you see that a lot with drift cars because you don't get a ton of front airflow anyway. So I wanted to try a rear setup. Have you had a chance to push this on the track? Uh, I've done a bunch of like grassroots events with it. So it's been pretty solid. And it doesn't overheat or anything? No, no, it's pretty good. Can we take a look at the interior? Maybe yeah. if you can get on that side. Sure. So the door itself is stock, but right. you made your own door skin. Right. Yeah, I bead rolled little panels and was playing with the, the little quilting pattern, kind of like the sunroof, trying to tie that together. Ah, oh, okay. Blocked off the sunroof. I don't even know what to say. I mean, there's just so much that you've done. Like, what's left that's Volkswagen, you know? Not much. Oh. Yeah, like the dash, sort of. I like the party lights button. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So the dash, you made this obviously. Yep. Um, this tunnel, this all. Yep. Cause uh, since it was front wheel drive is super low and there's probably just not enough room for a drive shaft or anything, right? Right. And then the trans comes up pretty high in here. So that BMW trans is pretty big. Oh, okay. So it is a BMW transmission. Yeah. The same trans that would have been behind it in a manual 540. So the Getrag 420. I don't even know what to say. It's like. <laughs> It's, it's like too crazy that <laughs> I mean and that part, part of it is that from the outside it's you can obviously tell there's something going on with it you know as soon as you see it right. but realistically it's pretty subtle in that you don't have the craziest aero bits uh, you don't have a huge wing it, it doesn't really look like a drift car yeah, it's kind of in between. Yeah, and, and, but it has all of the, the goodies. Like you have a, a hydro setup. There's just so much. I mean, even this, did you have to make this too? What, the skirt? Yeah, the skirt here. Yeah, that's another set of like replacement uh, rust repair panel skirts that bolt on. So I kind of welded in three inches to the top of it and made them bolt on. Oh, I see. Oh, it, it's, it's like, cause the stock one is still there. And this basically just extends. Right, out. so I made a little side skirt, just like a plastic trim one, kind of, but sheet metal. So, and then on in the like factory rockers, I had to replace those because the car was rusty. All my coolant plumbing is in there oh. for the rear radiator. And it goes just which side? Both sides. Both sides. Okay, so it it goes. Uh, the return is is this way or? Yes. Okay. Wow, that's so useful. It's and like I the can't old bottom out and tear it 
coolant line or anything like right that. that's like the whole old porsche thing with their oil lines right all right it goes on the uh, rocker panels or right around them what is this for why did you have to do this uh the tunnel flexed a bit with the e-brake i like when they were like really solid so i didn't want any play it's so simple and then you just had to do like a little dimple yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so functional. I absolutely love it. I mean, in a way, it has its own aesthetic, you know? Yeah. Because it's all functional. But, uh, I mean, like, you just have, like, the brake bias just yep, sitting the cable there runs right, right where you can actually, uh, right where you can access it. And you have a Willwood pedal box. Yep. Uh, and all of this is still Volkswagen, like the steering? Uh, most of it is, like the top part is. And then like in the middle is kind of an E30 bit, and then it goes kind of with the Volkswagen. It's kind of a hodgepodge of pieces that were kicking around, just because I had to get the column quite a bit further, because the seats are a lot further back than you'd normally be in a Volkswagen. Uh, how many other manufacturers or parts did you use on this, do you think? Uh, I mean, because you got Ford, you got BMW, obviously, a lot. Yep. Um, you got Nissan. Nissan front suspension bits. We got right. Jeep for the radiator. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I it, it's just like I don't know. I, it, it's pretty cool that you kind of just put it all together to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. See what's available. Anything else you can think of? Uh, there's so much. I don't. I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> but, yeah, you can see the coolant hoses come up the side of the frame right here. Those are all hard piped in. Oh my God, that's so cool. So this has essentially become part of the chassis. Yeah, that, that's all braced in. The chassis is below it, but uh -huh. it's all welded to it and gusseted. Uh -huh. So and there's, you know, factory hoses if I have to get replacements. That's the other thing I try to do is like available parts. I don't want to mess with them. So I, if I break something here, I don't, I can run to the parts store and get another one instead of having to modify it or whatever. And that's uh, the leaf notice this, the center windshield. Yeah, center wiper. Yeah. Or, or is that something that you had to just modify? I, I had to make the linkage and everything. It's the stock kind of wiper arm there, but the cage goes through where the other side was. So I figured I'd try the DTM mono wiper thing. It looks so crazy. I absolutely love it. What about the brakes? Is that, is that uh... the fronts are just Volkswagen, uh, like VR brakes. And then the rear's got two sets of calipers. Both are Mustang calipers. Ah, more Ford bits. Yep, a pile of spacer. Amazing. I gotta take a look at this under here. Yeah, there's a trailer hitch too. Oh, for what? Just in case, you know, the drift week or something like that, if I ever yeah. felt like doing it. I built something there as a jack point so I can pick up the rear to let the suspension droop out and change tires, but. Oh, I see what you mean about the four link, everything. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see this at Drift Week. Amazing. What a, what a great uh, build. So, and how big is this fuel cell? Uh, it's like 10 gallons, thereabouts. It's just an eBay fuel cell, but I was having a bunch of fuel pump issues, so I made a little drop-in uh, kind of surge tank. So, it was a recent thing, because we are trying to diagnose that. But. Uh, so, do you drive this on the street? Uh, it's registered. I drive it here and there. It's not the best street car, but it's fun to take the launcher to the store here and there. Yeah, I'm sure you get some interesting looks. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going on with this thing? <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty wild in amongst normal cars driving around. I actually am really excited to see you out there drifting uh, this weekend. You know, it'll be like a S13, S14, a bunch of BMWs, and then we get a Volkswagen. Yeah, definitely odd one out, but... Like, cause I think the only other Volkswagen that I've shot that's a drift car is uh, uh, Tanner's um, yeah. Passat, right? Right. But that's, there's really not much Passat left in that thing. <laughs> that thing is so crazy. Uh, but I like this because this is a budget build. What's your estimate in, in terms of, I don't know if you're, you're, um, you're willing to say how much you think it costs to build this thing? I kind of, as a policy, I try not to ever tally that up. So I don't really know, but there's <laughs> but no like high dollar parts on this. Right. So. It's, it's on the lower side. Definitely. You're right. Well, I mean, what was the most expensive thing for this? Like individual item? I don't know. It's probably suspension. Oh, just like coilovers. the suspension's new then. That's probably one of the only things that's new. Yeah. What, and what suspension are you in? Bilstein, face I think. So. And so 
but but that's um it wasn't obviously meant for this car then it is actually oh it is yeah how does it work then uh i just welded different mounts on the uh, rear axle so the spring rates actually worked out pretty good hmm. very cool well mike thank you so much for showing us this thing of course we'll follow you over the weekend and try to get uh as many shots of you driving actually on track because uh i'm actually really curious to see this thing drift. Actually, can you start it up so we can hear it? Yeah. So Leaf, what do you think? I think it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's got BMW. My first car is a GTI, so I love that. And then like, it's metal bodywork. Yeah. It's nuts. I know. The, well, the, the, thing that, the thing that gets me the most is the fact that the over fenders in the rear are functional. Oh yeah. No, this car is insane. That's what gets me. So what about this? Does this do anything? Yeah, I mean, there's a slot here, so like all the hot air coming out of the radiator can come out that way. So at higher speeds, I don't know, I've found it comes, like air comes up against the back of the deck lid, so it kind of gets hot in the car. So I try to give it another way out. And Amazing. This is just not for form. This is function also. Right. I love that. Yeah, because I mean, while this is quite a bit of, of space for the air to escape it's probably not natural for it to to come out this way right right i mean it wasn't it's was definitely not designed for it but uh this this is pretty cool you can actually see that wheel wells cut out and move forward three inches because this is further back now wait so is this the original panel that you just this is off of another parts car oh oh, oh wait so then the 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 original gti wheel well was over here then well no it was in the same spot uh -huh. with the over fenders because i wanted this gap up oh. i had to cut out the wheel well and move it forward and up and i had to change the shape of it because this is a much bigger tire than mark three would have had right i see huh so then wh what is this from that's a stock bumper you just cut it uh, it's another set of stock bumpers i cut and then kind of grafted it onto the other ones so. uh. This is what's, what gets me. The fact that you included the trim right. is, is what gets me. I wow. forgot I meant to put another piece here. I haven't gotten to that yet. Huh. I see what you mean though. You know, when, when I ask you, I'm like, so what'd you do to the car? It, it's almost like you, you freeze because there's too many things. You did everything to the exactly. car. It's, I, there's I not much left. Of it too. Yeah. I started looking at stuff like, oh yeah, I made that bit too. But. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do this and I turn this upside down and now it's functional or right. something. <laughs> awesome. Also, we, I built the whole car last summer, other than the wide body, in two and a half months. So from a shell to this, there's a lot of uh, after work time. Yeah, I can only imagine. Can you give it a couple revs so I can hear it? That's angry sounding. Yeah. That doesn't sound German in a way. Right. Yeah, it, it actually kind of sounds American a little bit. Yeah, it's got a little hit to both. Yeah, I like it. Very cool. Good job. Thanks. Good job. We're gonna check out more cars here, but we're definitely gonna keep shooting this thing. Yeah.